But you don't see it so much in the Hindu community, for example, um, where most of the, the functionaries are not professional clergy um, in the way that we understand. And as a result, it's very hard for them to get involved in um, uh, clergy associations, which usually meet during the week and not on weekends. Um, so it, it's, it's fascinating that Maimonides, he basically lost out on this, that the rabbinate, even in the Middle Ages, was evolving towards a community-supported professional clergy. Any, uh, was he a traditionalist, would you say, in advocating against that, in resisting I, that? I would say there was already a fairly strong, you know, I mean, in the Gaonate in Babylon, that there was a, already a strong tradition. So I think you have both. So he was an iconoclast in a sense. Well, he was. Yeah, he was trying to go back to sort of the early rabbinic times, and I think that you know uh, it wasn't feasible for most of them. Yes, jo yes, uh, Robert. Uh, I, I wish to defend my Mondays, and I don't huh? think I don't think he lost out. I think the critical word here is charity. I don't think that the rabbinate of today, the way they've evolved, constitute charity. Maybe in those days it might have, but, but they perform a function, whereas what I see him dealing with here is someone who does nothing but sponge off society. No, I, I understand what you're saying, but in fact, when he means charity, he means the communal purse. I, okay? hope, I hope you're not going to deduct your synagogue dues this year, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, no, a no that's a charitable deduction. No, he, he means the communal funds. In other words, the community collected tzedakah from all of its members as a kind of tax, right? They obviously usually had to pay some to the local ruler, especially in Europe. The community collected funds and they did it on the basis of a person's income and, and then they always had to sort of, you know, basically, build, I mean, that was the problem with Jews in, in, in Europe was that it was pernicious and it was completely, you know, the ruler could come today <coughs> one year and say, I want 10,000 ducats or whatever, and the next year ask for 20,000, and the, it was kind of like Jews were cash cows, okay? Um, so what the community did was is they added on to that, they figured out a budget, they said, okay, we owe the ruler so much, and on top of that we need X amount to support the community affairs, which can include literally supporting the poor, supporting orphans, supporting widows, all kinds of communal things, and it also included supporting the scholars, all right, who functioned as teachers and judges and so on, and the, 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 the shochtim and the moalim and the scribes. Uh, it got very, you know, sophisticated by the, 17th, the 16th and 17th century in Eastern Europe. Um, so that was all part of the communal fund, and that's what he, Maimonides is talking about here. Um, he doesn't believe the scholars should be paid from the communal fund. They should make their own living. Unless, or even if they did communal services, like uh, what you mentioned? Absolutely. Well, no, the Shaktim were, were paid because they were, that was their occupation. They were, being, they were like, they were butchers, right? And the Moholim were paid and the cantors were paid. Um, in other words, scholars should do nothing else. The scholars should not be paid. In other words, for what they do. He doesn't believe that's the function of a scholar, that you don't, there's a famous statement in, in rabbinic literature, you don't use the Torah as a spade to dig with. Mm. But wasn't because the answers were like, like the, 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 the shamash, the, the, the person who... Well, no, in his day, the, as I said, the cantors were more like itinerant opera singers, you know. I mean, they were hired for in, various... In yeah, yeah, when we read about the problem of drunken know. cantors, they were, they were used mm -hmm. as particular kinds of communal functionaries for which they were paid particular fees, mm -hmm. right? He doesn't... He separates off the rabbinate from all of that stuff. Would he call it... The rabbinate, or are we, is that our... He's calling, yeah, on? well, no, he's calling it sages. He's in other words, he's sages. using the word Talmud Chacha. So a sage is someone who studies. Yeah. And you say but rabbinate also, to us, we think of much broader... Well, look at what he did. He was an authority who the judges in the community cons consorted with, you know, Cons consulted. He had letters he, that people wrote him from all over the Jewish world for his decision on religious matters. Uh, he wrote books. He gave sermons on Shabbat, uh, study sessions on Shabbat. This was all. He didn't get paid for any of that stuff. He only made his money as a doctor. You know. How did he learn that on his own or with other people? It was part of the curriculum really? of of the Andalusian Jew, of the well-educated Andalusian Jew. But he became a specialist, you might say, mm -hmm. uh, really? by focusing on on medical training, both 
remember again he 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 he, he had clinical learning in hospitals in North Africa. He probably so, was an apprentice. Well, yeah. Well, no. The, the the as I think I mentioned this before, the the way you did it was you the family hired a private tutor, um, or the father who was a doctor would teach it. It was usually there were no medical schools. Um, but there, there were hiring tutors, there was reading books, and there was clinical training in hospitals. And Maimonides did all, all of that stuff. He had, he had great understanding of the psychic influence on illness as well. But that was part of the medical tradition he studied, and as well as his own personal clinical experience. Yes, Robert? Um, there, there are two words. Uh, we need to pass this because, <clears throat> to some extent, we are dependent upon your interpretation of of the word charity. This, if you go back to the first two lines of chapter 10, the word is to work and live in charity. And I'd like to know what the words, what the actual word he has for work there and the word for charity. What's what? Chapter 3? No, 10. Uh, we, we, chapter, chapter, three, chapter, chapter 3, verse 10. Chapter 3, paragraph 10. Paragraph 10. 10. Because you, you said charity implies public purse, whereas yeah, I think yeah. the rabbis work, I, the, the, the way it's evolved. Um, he says, that means does not work, period. Right? And then? Vayit parnes min hatsadaka makes a living or gets his parnasa his ability to be lived from the Hatzadaka. He means here the, the communal charity, charity fund. Hare ze halal et Hashem. This is a profanation of the name of God. Well, I understand it's bad, but the, the, <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand he's against no, it. What, what, what I'm passing is, is the word Hatzadaka. Has, has no, no, he's very crap. specific. He's, he's talking right about, you know, um, not doing a craft, a profession. Malacha can mean a craft or a profession in this context. It doesn't mean physical labor. It means a craft or a pro profession. Okay? we got to stop here. Um, what we're going to do next time is, um, you, you know, you can read the rest of the stuff here. It's very interesting stuff about how you're supposed to honor a sage or a scholar. But I want to go on to the laws concerning idolatry on page 71, for which I have given you the material already. Um, I may give you know move, give you more the next week, but essentially that's what we're going to look at. And I also gave you a bunch of um, extra stuff for you to look at. I think we're not going to look at all of it, but uh, I want you to notice his uh, focus on um, what we would call superstitious practices. Okay. Thank you.